Hi everyone, today we're talking about climber's elbow again. Now in the first video I talked about why climber's elbow occurs and I specifically focused on the outside of the elbow here, so the lateral epicondyle tendon, which is otherwise known as tennis elbow if it's inflamed. And then I also talked briefly about um, how to recover from it. Now in this video I'm going to go a bit more in depth about the exercises you can do to speed up that recovery. So the first thing I'm going to look at is something called a flex bar. So this is just basically a very thick, stiff kind of rubber bar that you can buy from physio clinics, you can get them online, they're sold absolutely everywhere. And this is the first piece of gear that I recommend. And basically what it does is, well, I'll show you. So with your affected arm, you would put that at the bottom of the flex bar with your palm facing you, okay? And the unaffected arm, you just have your palm facing away from you. And then the idea is you twist the flex bar so it's now under tension, and you slowly, with the affected arm, release that tension, okay? And what that's doing is it's providing an eccentric exercise. So basically I'm using the muscles and the tendon in my forearm to slowly release, okay? And what that's gonna do is it's going to very gently and in a non-aggressive way load that tendon, that lateral epicondyle that's become inflamed and damaged. So once again, to load the flex bar up and get that tension, you simply load it vertically, straighten it out, and you want to slowly release over four seconds. One, two, three, four. Now if you're in the early stages of recovery, try not to just reload like that. That's a concentric exercise, okay? And it may irritate the tendon. Now if you're sort of, you know, two weeks into recovery, feel free to just re reload and then release again. But if you're in the early stages, it may be tempting, but don't just go back to the vertical position like so. Straighten out and do a slow controlled movement. I can't emphasize that enough. It has to be controlled and deliberately slow to get the benefit, okay? Now, how often you should do this exercise, it, to be honest, it's extremely relative. I'd say as a very, very rough guide, maybe 10 reps three times a day, but even that's sort of a bit ambiguous. You really just have to do the exercise and you know find out what works for you. If the tendon is hurting while you're doing this exercise, it's not necessarily a problem. It should be a bit achy if you do this the first couple of times, but if you really are in extreme pain, please stop and just wait a while. Okay, so that's the flex bar. Now the other thing you can use is a flex band here. So it's made by the same company, but you know it is just essentially, you know, just an oversized rubber elastic band. But it's quite good. It's a little bit cheaper than the flex bar. And again, these are sold absolutely everywhere in physio clinics online. And basically, what you want to do is put the end of it under your foot. So I'm just going to stand on one end. Okay, so now that's under tension because it's under my foot. And with this end, I'm just gonna kind of wrap it around my hand. Again, this is the affected arm. I want a little bit more tension than that, actually. That looks good. So now that I've got a little bit of tension here, as you can see, it's a little bit flexible, so I can simply lift up my hand and then again, slowly releasing that tension. Now, of course, the TheraBand because it's elastic, is, is providing a downward force. It's trying to pull my hand down, but of course I have to resist that. So I'm going to reload, and then one, two, three, four. And I can feel that tension in my forearm, and of course, because my forearm muscles are working, that's also pulling on the tendon a little bit. And again, you can sort of reload and do this kind of action if you're kind of a couple of weeks into your recovery but try and resist the temptation if it's a still a few days fresh. Just tilt your hand up and concentrate on the eccentric portion of the exercise, okay? Now, as I mentioned before in the first video, um, if you can't find this product, you can actually just tie lots of small elastic bands together. It's a bit of a pain in the neck, but it's essentially the same thing. But hey, if you can get hold of a, a flex band, all the better. So those are the two main exercises that I'd recommend. And I wanted to mention a third thing here, which not a lot of people talk about, and that is an elbow brace. The 
which is it's essentially the jury is kind of out on this. So I mean, as opposed to whether these work or not, but essentially it is just kind of a, a, a fabric uh, piece. And the idea is that you kind of fit this on your arm just below the affected area. So obviously the tendon is here. So I'm placing that just below and then I put a little bit of tension on it, okay? And this is basically how the arm brace works. When you tense your forearm, the idea is that the arm brace takes a little bit of that force. So when I flex my forearm, as well as pulling on the tendon, it's also putting a little bit of pressure on the arm brace and theoretically taking some of that pressure off the tendon when you're climbing and you're sort of pinching and doing that. But to be honest, the jury's kind of out whether these work or not. Some professionals say they're helpful, others say they're just a placebo. Um, I've used one when I had tennis elbow and eh, I'm not really sure whether it worked or not. I personally think it was helpful and in any case it's not going to cause any further damage to the tendon so I would personally recommend it. So there we go, there's your arm brace as kind of a, a third backup to your recovery. So ultimately those are the exercises that you have to deal with in order to get rid of your lateral epicondylitis here and your climber's elbow. The most important thing really is don't overdo it. You know, if you are in pain, stop climbing and just rest it. It can be extremely frustrating, but keep at it and eventually it'll go away. So uh, if you want to check out the first part of the video, it's available on our YouTube channel or obsessionclimbing.com. And if you want to check out any other videos on techniques or gear reviews, please just visit the website. Thanks a lot.